It pays to be insured until it doesn't. Welcome to Mojo Travels, and today we're discussing what travel insurance does and does not cover. Are you a fan of our videos? Be sure to subscribe to Mojo Travels and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a closer look at what's typically included and excluded from a travel insurance policy. For the record, every provider has their own inclusions and exclusions, which also includes different levels of coverage available within the same company, so none of the following should be considered a guarantee. Travelers should always review the specifics of a given policy. Not covered. Pre-existing conditions. If you're seemingly in perfect health, then you thankfully needn't worry about this exclusion. But if, like many middle-aged or senior travelers, you have medical conditions that you manage via regular treatment, medication, or simply through lifestyle choices, you might be at risk. You'll still be covered for most medical issues or accidents that could befall you while traveling, but if the insurance company can tie it to your pre-existing conditions, you're unfortunately out of luck. And depending on where you're traveling and the local cost of healthcare, treatment could cost you a small fortune. Unfortunately, many companies consider pregnancy to be a pre-existing condition. In fact, reproductive health in general is often excluded, at least in terms of reasons for canceling. Venereal disease, pregnancy, abortion, or an HIV diagnosis are all typically not covered. The same goes with issues of mental health, be it before your departure or during your trip. Covered. Injury or illness. Barring the aforementioned pre-existing conditions, your travel insurance should have you covered for any and all typical medical emergencies that could arise and impact your travel. This applies both the time period between looking and departure, as well as during the trip itself. Should you get into an accident or suddenly fall ill, you should be eligible for reimbursement of all prepaid expenses. The nice thing is, the policy doesn't limit such medical emergencies to yourself. If a medical emergency should befall a family member, spouse, traveling companion, or business partner, and it forces you to stay home as a result, most policies will have you covered. This equally applies should you have to interrupt your trip and return home early. If you're staying with family or friends abroad, and they should fall ill or be incapacitated, you might also be able to qualify for a refundable cancellation. Not covered. Unlawful activities. This should really go without saying, but don't participate in criminal activity. Of course, regardless of whether or not you've got a trip planned, it's a bad idea. If you get yourself arrested in the lead up to your trip and it's stipulated that you can't travel, or you have conflicting court dates, your policy will not reimburse your travel expenses. This equally applies during your trip. Should you get injured or fall ill while doing something illegal, your insurance company can deny your claim. Not only will your medical expenses be your own, but you'll forfeit reimbursement for the losses incurred throughout the remainder of your trip. It's worth noting that you needn't commit a major offense for this exclusion to take effect. Drunk and disorderly can be enough. Furthermore, injuries incurred while intoxicated are typically excluded from emergency medical coverage. Covered. Job loss or work-related cancellations. If you lose your job, chances are that you've got bigger concerns than missing out on your trip. That being said, the money that you allocated to travel may suddenly be needed elsewhere in your personal financial planning. Thankfully, almost all insurance providers cover sudden job loss, meaning that you should be able to recoup almost all of the expenses you've paid for to date relating to the trip. By the same token, if things suddenly get crazy busy with work and your boss informs you that you cannot under any circumstances leave on holiday, you will again be covered. Same goes if you're suddenly transferred by your company in a way that interferes with travel. On a different but related note, should you be a business owner and your property be vandalized or robbed, most insurers will recognize this as a justifiable cancellation. Not covered. Medical tourism. This could seem like a bit of a niche subset of the travel industry, but you might be surprised. It's estimated that travelers collectively spend anywhere between $45 to $72 billion annually on medically motivated travel. The medical tourism industry as a whole is valued at approximately $439 billion, so yeah, it's big money. But if you're traveling with the intention of seeking medical treatment abroad, conventional travel insurance will not cover you. In fact, even your personal health insurance is unlikely to help in these situations. 
Electing to undergo medical treatment in a foreign country simply brings with it too high of a risk of affecting your travel plans for any insurance company to justify covering all the bookings you may need to change. Then there are the potential expensive medical emergencies that could stem from the treatment itself. Covered, bankruptcy of travel supplier. For all the infrastructure involved, travel is a volatile industry, and with so many budget airlines and travel-related startups operating these days, the likelihood of bankruptcy feels higher than ever. The sad truth of the matter is, if an airline suddenly folds, they are, of course, very unlikely to give you your money back. Thankfully, in such a case, your travel insurance has got your back. This applies both before your travel dates under trip cancellation and then trip interruption should the airline collapse during your trip and leave you stranded abroad. That being said, it's important to make sure that your policy covers not just bankruptcy of suppliers, but also financial default, which means that the company has stopped operations regardless of their bankruptcy status. Not covered, anything on the exclusion list. This might sound redundant, but it cannot be stressed enough. Everything we're discussing today, inclusions and exclusions, are considered pretty standard for travel insurance companies. But before settling on a policy, it's absolutely imperative that you carefully read over their specific list of exclusions. Because, theoretically, they could put literally anything in there and have a legal leg to stand on, so long as you sign on the dotted line. Items appearing on exclusion lists can range from bad weather to, say, nuclear contamination. So it's worth reviewing this section of the policy. Extreme sports are typically excluded, as are flights that you've won in a contest or paid for with points, and that's a big one. Insurers will often employ catch-all terms that you need to watch out for. For example, theft coverage might exclude unattended items, which could refer to anything you leave in a rental car. Covered. Unrest and upheaval. This is just about the last thing that you want to have to think about when planning a trip, but acts of terrorism are unfortunately a very real concern in the travel industry. Thankfully, should a terrorist attack be carried out in or around one of the destinations you plan to visit during your travels, you're typically covered by insurance. Terrorism is a complicated subject in many ways, and unfortunately this holds true as it applies to travel insurance. The attack in question needs to be officially deemed an act of terror by the government. Insurance companies also establish their own respective windows in which the trip and attack must coincide. You might not feel safe visiting a destination for months after an attack, but insurers usually limit coverage to 30 days. Some only offer a 7-day window. If a terrorist attack occurred in the destination before you booked, this may void coverage for cancellation should another one be carried out. Not covered. Epidemics and pandemics. This is another tricky one, because viral outbreaks of disease can occur so suddenly, and the measures surrounding them are so subjective, when one does occur, it can be very hard to make an insurance claim. If you want to cancel for fear of contracting the disease via visiting an affected area, most insurers won't reimburse you, deeming this to be your personal choice rather than an actual impediment. And this is a double-edged sword, because those who planned a trip after an epidemic first broke out might find themselves being denied emergency medical coverage because the epidemic is deemed to have been a known event at the time of booking. Same goes with cancellation after the fact. Some insurers are more accommodating than others in times of a national or global health crisis, but across the board, the likelihood of coverage is low. Covered. Natural disasters. While your travel insurance provider might leave you high and dry in the event of an epidemic, they tend to be quite helpful when a natural disaster strikes. Earthquakes, fires, floods, volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, tsunamis, you're pretty much covered across the board. The only real caveat is that the natural disaster needs to be devastating enough to pose a serious risk to personal safety, damage property, and cause utilities and transportations to be affected. In short, it needs to be bad enough to ruin your trip. If a natural disaster destroys your home or upends your local life, this is typically also considered grounds for canceling. That being said, it's worth noting that you're not usually covered for cancellation until the event has happened. A hurricane forecast likely won't get you reimbursed until it has actually hit. Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Travels, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.